In this video, I'm going to present you one of my papers. The objective of this paper is to measure the effect of weapons on violence in the recipient country. Violence measured as the probability of conflict, the number of battle-related deaths, or the number of refugees. One of the main results of this paper is that if European countries will stop for a year to send weapons to Africa, it will reduce the number of refugees by half a million. The main difficulty when you try to measure the effect of weapons on war is that war affects at the same time weapons import. This issue, called reverse causality, prevents to properly quantify the effect of weapons on war. By addressing this issue, this paper provides the first quantification of this effect for a global set of countries. First, we are going to see why this question is of tremendous importance. Second, we are going to see which data I use to do those predictions. Third, we are going to see together what's the statistical approach I'm using to assess the effect of weapons on war. Fourth, we are going to see the results. And finally, I will conclude. The most deadly weapons and key weapons in a wide majority of conflicts since the 90s are what we call small arms and light weapons. Those weapons are the weapons that one person or a small crew can carry and use. As for example, pistols, rifle, hand grenades, portable rocket launchers, shotgun, mortars, and so on. Those weapons are mostly produced in developed countries, as most of the suffering of the people who die are from developing countries, countries who lack the production capacity and technology to produce their own weapons, and hence they rely mostly on developed countries to obtain those weapons. Given this context, this paper aims at measuring the effect of small arms and light weapons imports on violence in the recipient country. But surprisingly, this debate has not been settled so far, as on one hand, we have NGOs who argue that weapons are a threat to peace, but on the other hand, we have arms lobbyists and suppliers who argue that actually weapons are the solution to violence. For example, using the famous word from Wayne Lapierre, chief executive of the National Rifle Association, the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is with a good guy with a gun. And partly this debate has not been settled because there is no quantification of this causal effect of weapons on violence. To measure the effect of weapons on war, I'm using a data set with data for each country on each year from 92 to 2011. The data set starts in 92 because small arms and light weapons became a major issue after the end of the Cold War and it stops in 2011 due to data availability. And with my statistical model, what I will try to predict are several indicators of violence. The number of internal conflicts, the probability of an internal conflict in each country, the number of battle-related deaths, and the number of refugees originating from each country. And to predict those indicators of violence, I'm using the value of small arms and light weapons imported in each country. Usually, a question that I get at this point is what about the black market? Well, indeed, the data that I have on weapons transfers are from data registered at the customs. So basically, official transfers between countries. Black market represents approximately 10% of the global flows of weapons, but I'm not taking those into account for several reasons. Well, first, by definition of the black market, it's difficult to obtain data on those, systematic data. And it's also 
most of the time or a significant part of the transfer that we have in mind that are defined as black market are more what we could define as gray markets. Those are weapons that are transferred in the correct countries, in the destination countries, but for example, they are sent to the police force, but never arrive in the end of the police. They are diverted once they arrive in the country. And for those transfer, well, I have already those data because I have data of customs, so I see the weapons entering in a country. And also the point of this paper is to assess if the official transfers, if the transfer that countries are responsible for or governments affect violence or not. As for black markets, the transfers are by definition already prohibited. So it's not an open question if we should prevent those weapons or not. So now let me explain you how do I approach the problem statistically. When you try to assess the effect of weapons on war, potentially there are other factors or the things that will influence the two variables or the two things at the same time. Those are called confounding factors and we have to control for them. When I say control, I mean you have to disentangle those effects to have a clean effect, if we want an effect, clean from all those confounding factors between weapons and war. And let me take an example of a confounding factor. It might be the GDP. We know that GDP is positively associated with weapons imports. As the country is less financially constrained, they might be able to import more weapons. But GDP is also negatively correlated with conflict. So we have to get rid of this effect that might pollute or bias the estimate. And I will control for other type of confounding factors, as for example, a democracy scale, if the country is more democratic or autocratic, for other potential source of weapons, as for example, uh, if there was a conflict in the last 15 years in the countries, as we know that weapons tend to remain in the same territory after a conflict, if the country is exporting weapons, because if you are a weapons producer, and you, you tend to export weapons, so it's a proxy for local production. And I will also be able to control for what we call country fixed effects. Those capture everything that is fixed over time for each country. For example, the geographical location, so in which neighborhood, in which area of the world it is, uh, if, they have, uh, if there is a coast or not, and all those type of things, the climate, and, and so on and so on. I'm also controlling for continent year fixed effects, meaning that for each year, the potential effect that affects each continent differently. For example, when the, the US invades uh, Iraq or Afghanistan, it has an effect on Africa, and I'm capturing this effect with the continent year fixed effect. Now that the effect of weapons on war is cleaned from the effect of confounding factors, let's address the issue of reverse causality. Ideally, to measure a causal effect of weapons on war, we would like to send randomly weapons to different countries. And as those weapons are allocated randomly, it's, they are allocated independently from the political situation, the conflict situation, and hence, it allows to measure a causal effect. But this experiment is not possible to convey or not even something we would like to do in real life. So the idea would be to find historical events in the sample that will replicate this experiment or this random allocation. And this strategy is what we call an instrumental variable. I found anecdotal evidence that when a supplier's country, a country that provides weapons, goes at war, it creates a shortage of their weapons. Because mostly they are sending all their ammunition and weapons and production capacity towards the conflict they are involved. So, for example, there is few headlines highlighting this fact. The New York Times, with two wars, U.S. need of ammunition is soaring. Alabama News, Russia conflict could cause ammunition shortage in the U.S. 
independence, U.S. forced to import bullets from Israel as troops used 250,000 for every rebel killed. And finally, NBC News, ammunition shortage squeezes police force. Here it's an article showing and explaining that the deployment of U.S. force in Iraq and Afghanistan put so much pressure in their production of weapons and ammunition that even the police force in the U.S. are not able to train with real bullets as everything is sent to the Middle East. Let me illustrate this with one example. The example of Angola in 2002. So in the beginning of 2000, there are two groups in Angola fighting for independence of a region called the Cabinda region. In 2002, one of the major arms suppliers to Angola, Spain, joined force to Operation Enduring Freedom, so war against Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. And as they joined this war, it reduced their global production or supply of weapons. And we observe actually the same year, in 2002, a reduction of 88% of the imports of weapons in Angola. And the same year, and this is quite well documented by Human Rights Watch, the two groups, Flekfak and Flek Renovada, fighting for the independence of the Cabinda region in Angola, entered a period of low activity, caused by a lack of ammunition and weapons. So basically, the whole picture is the following. In this specific case, I'm using the fact that when Spain is fighting a war on another continent, so here in Afghanistan, it creates a global shortage of their weapons, and I'm using this shortage to look at the effect of conflict on different continents. So for example, in Africa, and in this case, in Angola in particular. So to measure the effect of weapons on war, I will replicate this, use this trick, or replicate this experiment for a global set of countries. And when major suppliers of each country are fighting wars elsewhere, on another continent, it creates a shortage of weapons, and I'm able to use those shortages to look at the effect on the violence in countries where the two conflicts are not potentially directly related. They are only related through the effect of weapons imports. By using this strategy, I'm able to show that weapons influence positively conflicts, and more specifically, that more arms and imports are increasing the probability of internal conflict, the number of internal conflicts, the number of battle-related deaths, and the number of refugees originating from the country receiving the weapons. A key assumption in this paper to assess and properly quantify the effect of weapons on war is that the conflict where the suppliers are involved on another continent is influencing the situation in the country we are interested in only through the pathway of arms and not through other pathways. So, for example, the fact that Spain is fighting a war or involved in a war against Al-Qaeda is not directly influencing the conflict for the independence in the Cabinda region through other pathways that arms. And we could think of about other stories. For example, it might be linked to development aid, or it might be through links or caused by other imports of weapons, also because maybe some suppliers' country have troops deployed in the country we are interested in, and when they fight a country a conflict on another continent, they redirect their troops. Or it might also be the fact that there is or there are on different continent global sets or global network of terrorists, for example, Daesh or Al-Qaeda. And when uh, there is the deployment of U.S. troops in the Middle East, well, it might affect also Africa because in the, there is Al-Qaeda of the Islamic Maghreb, so in North Africa, they might be redirecting their effort to the conflicts in Afghanistan, and so on and so on. And those stories might invalidate uh, the pathway that I'm suggesting. And that's why you can read in the paper how I'm testing and discarding all those alternative stories the suggested channel for this effect, so how do I explain that more weapons imports increase the probability of an internal conflict 
in the recipient country is the following. More weapons imports reflect the population arming or having more access to weapons, which reduce the cost of insurrection. And this is backed up by two pieces of evidence. First, a survey in 2017 showed that 85% of the small arms and light weapons are held by civilians. And the second piece of evidence is that my instruments, so the shortages that I observe, do not affect military expenditure showing that the instrument, those shortages affect the imports that mostly goes to the civilian. This paper shows for the first time that armed suppliers are able to influence internal conditions favoring conflicts in the destination country. So it stresses even more the importance for arms regulations. Those framework, as the latest to date, the Arms Trade Treaty, exist already, but are often criticized. If we take the example of United Kingdoms, who kept sending for millions of weapons in Saudi Arabia during the conflict in Yemen, even though the international community asked them repeatedly to stop, and even though that the United Kingdom signed and ratified the Arms Trade Treaty, they kept sending those weapons. So hopefully, this new evidence of the quantification of this effect will help to enforce those treaties. If you want to know more, I recommend you to read the paper, the link is below, or ask any question in the comments that I will gladly answer and discuss with you. And if you think that the results of this paper are relevant for the world outside academia, please feel free to share as much as possible. If you're interested in discussing scientific research, click on the subscribe and bell button to get all the updates on the, of the channel. And thanks a lot for watching.